What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. And in this episode, I want to share with you how millionaires double their money, what their psychology of money is. Because when I was making $20,000 a year as a sergeant in the Marines, I was far away from this type of psychology, this type of thinking. And so therefore I was far away from a reality of making 40,000 a year, $100,000 a year, let alone making a million dollars a year. So every time I do a workshop across the country, no matter where I go, I ask a very basic question. Who here would love to be a millionaire? And guess how many hands go up? Everybody's hands go up. But the real question is, is who has a strategy? Who knows how to actually get there? Because I think if you know how to get there, we'll have a lot more millionaires in our country, a lot more people be financially independent in our country, and a lot less people will be in debt in our country, and more of you will be givers, a lot of you will be thrivers, not just survivors, a lot of you will be living your passions, a lot of you will live a life of fulfillment and happiness and enjoyment. So in this episode, I'm gonna share with you how millionaires think about money, and the first rule I wanna share with you is a basic, financial rule about how money grows in your favor. And then I'm going to share right after that, how money doesn't grow in your favor. Okay, let's take a look. So there's a rule out there. It's called the basic rule of 72. I remember I first learned this in 1999, 2000. It said, Matt, just take the interest rate that you're earning on your savings and investments and divide that into 72 because that will determine how fast you double your money. So how you double your money and how fast you double your money. So for example, if I had to have a, <laughs> listen, by the way, when I first got started in saving and investing, I would scratch, I would scrimp, I would put everything together, coupons, I would do everything I could just to save a whopping 500 bucks. And my goal was to get this 500 bucks to be 1,000, to 1,000 to be 2,000, 2,000 to double to 4,000, 4,000 to double to 8,000, and to have $16,000 in the Mac to me was a godsend. And the way for me to build this asset was to figure out and determine what type of rate of return that I would earn. So for example, if I was earning a 7.2% rate of return, you divide that into 72 years, this $500 would double in 7.2 years, 10 years later, to $1,000. If I waited another 10 years earning a 7.2% rate of return, that $1,000 would be $2,000. So the name of the game is try to find yourself a higher rate of return on your money, so therefore your money doubles sooner than later. But here's the challenge though. Number one, the higher you, you ask your money to grow, the higher the rate of return, also the higher the risk. You expose yourself to more risk because the higher interest rate something earns, the higher you have the probability for you to lose money. And then you gotta start all over from scratch again, or worse, you gotta wait for years for you to recruit which you lost, it just you get back to square one. So another area here too as well is understanding how debt, credit cards, and liabilities work against you. So instead of having $500 of assets, let's say I have $500 of debt. Now this $500 of debt will work against me, especially if the average credit card today, we looked it up, the average credit card interest rate right now is around 18%. So if I have my $500 in debt and all I'm doing is just minimum payment, and a lot of these minimum payments aren't enough to cover the minimum interest to pay on these credit cards and therefore this money is working against me. In other words, if this 18% is not where I'm earning it but what I'm owing it, this $500 doubles in four years to $1,000. If I don't pay off that debt, this $1,000 will grow to $2,000 of debt, same thing, in four years. So on and so forth if I'm not rushing to quickly pay off that debt. So in other words, people today have a harder time finding ways for them to earn a higher rate of return, but very easy for people to pay themselves debt and liabilities and credit cards and car loans and mortgages and student loan debt. It's so much easier to pay out more than what you're actually earning on your rate of return on your money, which means that a lot more people in America are more in debt the more they owe, and therefore they're not saving, they're not growing, they're not investing, the further and further behind they're being left. Now, I was a part of a TV segment, we we'll put a quick uh, flash here of what that looked like in Chicago, and they asked me about the FIRE movement. The FIRE movement talked about the financially independent retire early movement. People say, you know what? I wanna retire not only a millionaire, but I wanna retire sooner than later. I'm not waiting to retire until 65 years old. I said, well, when do you wanna retire? 
They say 45. Let's say somebody's 25 years old, okay? They're 25 years old and say, I want to retire at 45 years old. I don't want to wait till I'm 65. I don't want to wait till I'm 75. I want to retire at 45. Now, a couple ways to do it. You either grow an asset. So let's talk about this asset real quick. A lump sum of money. A lump sum of cash. Some of you guys build it outside a pension. Some of you build inside a 401k. Some of you, buy, some of you have a, a lump sum of cash and other savings and investment instruments that you might choose to have your money grow at a higher rate of return. So I asked this person, at 25 years old, you might want to retire at 45, had shifted to say, hey, how can I combine income with somebody else? So therefore, we're going to share apartment expenses. How can I combine my expenses in terms of cable, electricity, water, Wi-Fi, so therefore I'm not 100% paying it all by myself. They have a minimalist type of mentality where I don't want to acquire a lot of things. I want to pick myself up in a suitcase or in a backpack and I can go. I want to focus myself on coupon cutting, discount shopping, bulk buying and organization. So therefore I keep my expenses low because I didn't make sure I have $40,000 a year income. I can stretch that dollar every which way I can. So therefore, I don't have to work for anybody else for the rest of my life. Well, a couple of factors kicked in as a result of this. Two things kicked in. Number one, inflation. Depending on where you're looking at inflation, we're a little over 8% in inflation. It means less of your money is buying the things that you need to survive and live on. So therefore, you can be financially independent and retire early. In other words, your money has eroded in its purchasing power. Instead of the milk costing you two, three bucks for a gallon of milk, now it's costing you four or five dollars for a gallon of milk. Instead of you paying three bucks for a carton of eggs, now you're paying four or five bucks, six bucks for a carton of eggs, depending on what you want. You want the cheap, cheap eggs, or you want the organic eggs, or you want the brown eggs? You pick. So therefore, the quality of the food, the quality of your life, because it's a minimalist type of mentality, is to get the cheapest amount of things in life to sustain life, not quality, just enough to get by. And here's the thing. If somebody starts at 25, I want to have this mindset of fire, and I want to retire at 45, they have to have high income but low expenses. My question is, where are you drawing $40,000 a year to live on? Well, if you start at 25 and build an asset, approximately if you're using what they call the 4% rule, you need a million dollars in a lump sum somewhere, earning a rate of return, and you withdraw 4% of it, okay? You withdraw 4% of this money, from this million dollars. So hopefully you're earning higher than 5%, 6%, 7%, 8%. So your money's still growing compounding. So if you withdraw 4%, your money is earning to recoup what you withdrew. So therefore you're never cutting into the original principles of a million dollars. So becoming a millionaire is not necessarily for you to say, hey, I'm living in a great rich neighborhood. Being a millionaire says, I need to make a certain rate of return so I can withdraw, in this example, 4%, to live on $40,000 a year, so therefore I don't have to work for anybody else for the rest of my life. So here's a better question. Ask this person, at 45 years old, what type of rate of return do you need to earn on your asset in order for your money to double? So what type of money do you need to double here? Let's say you're earning a 10% rate of return. If you're earning a 10% rate of return, 45, I'm just round down here because a 10% rate of return, money doubles every 7.2 years. I'll just round down just to be a little generous. So if you're 38 years old, you need $500,000 at 38 years old, earning a 10% rate of return to double to $1 million by the time you're 45, and then you can say, I'm retired, okay? So if you're earning a 10% rate of return, what do you need then seven years before? And so if you're 38, what do you need? So you're 31 years old, what do you need to double to $500,000? You need $250,000 at 31 years old to double to $500,000. To double to $1 million seven years after that. So therefore you have a million dollars to retire and to draw $40,000 a year. So therefore you're not working for anybody else for the rest of your life. Okay, so what do you need then? So 31 minus seven is 24 years old. So what do you need at 24 years old to double to 31, at 31 years old to be $250,000, $125,000, that's the math. So $125,000 you need in a lump sum asset somewhere, earning a 10% rate of return to double to 125 to 250 at 31, to double seven years later to 500,000 at 38, to double to a million dollars at 45, to be a million dollars, so therefore you can 
withdraw 40,000 a year for the rest of your life and never work for anybody else ever again. So at 25 years old, I asked the common person sitting in our financial workshops, how much money do you have sitting in an asset column do you have with you right now? You know, a lot of people say at 25 years old, I got 500 bucks. I got a thousand bucks. I got 5,000 bucks. Okay. Well, beyond the 125,000 necessary at 24, a year before this plan first started to double to 250,000 to double to half million to double to a million dollars to compound. So therefore somebody's financially independent, retire early for the rest of their lives. So people say, well, I don't have enough saved up. Two options you have, two options you have. Number one, earn a higher rate of return. However, what's the problem you have looking for a higher rate of return? The problem you have here is you're asking for more risk. Okay, let's say it's a 10% rate of return. Then wherever you find your 10% rate of return, I'm not an investment advisor to tell you where to find 10% rate of return, but if you found a place for you to have a 10% rate of return consistently over time, then your money will double here in its predictable format. And so when you're looking at 45 years old and you don't have $125,000 ready to go, and you're not earning a higher rate of return, guess what you need to do then? You need to extend this out to 55. Well, man, that's not enough still. Well, why don't you extend it to 65? So you're back to square one. And Lord forbid you have a loss. Lord forbid you don't earn 10% rate of return in a particular year. Lord forbid when you decide to take this money out, you're not exposed to a stock market crash or a recession, or just like here in the year 2022, the shooting of this video, people lost 20% return, people lost 25% rate of return since the beginning of January 1st of 2022 to the current date and shooting of this video in November of the same year. Assuming that you put yourself in a best case scenario, then there it is. You now have a formula to retire at 45 years old. So a couple options for you. How do I get there? Well, first way, savings plus compound interest. What are you going to need? You need capital, money tucked away, times time to compound your money, times a rate of return that will now equal your lump sum. Well, some of you guys say, listen, Matt, I grew up in a multicultural middle, middle income neighborhood. I don't have a lot of capital. Well, great. So instead of retiring at 45, then push that retirement date off. Second way for you to do it, which is my chosen way, which is to control your income. Why control my income, Matt? Because no matter what happens, I'm my pay raise. No matter what happens, I'm my rate of return. No matter what happens, I choose when and how fast my money decides to double. Because now, what do I need to invest in then? I need to make sure in the meantime, I minimize my expenses and minimize my taxes, but I have to invest in skill sets. I need hard skills and soft skills, people skills and financially savvy skills, entrepreneur skills and negotiation skills, et cetera, et cetera. I need to increase my marketability. So therefore, if customers are looking for a solution for that problem, they need to come to me. I need to make sure people understand who I am in the marketplace. And number three, I need to make sure the value I give them brings in repeat business, brings in repeat customers. So let me tell you a little bit about the psychology of number two. So let's take a look at this. So when I started thinking differently about money, it was about 1999, 2000, year 2000. I was coming out the Marine Corps. I was praying that God would send me an answer as a single father to provide for my family, especially my decision to not re-enlist into the Marine Corps, to be there for my children and raise them up would now be my priority. And I read a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. We met him a couple uh, Octobers ago. It was Patrick Bedeva's birthday party at his house. We meet Robert Kiyosaki and I said, Robert, Semper Fi, he's also a Marine. And he's also Asian, I'm Filipino. I said, Robert, listen, I got to tell you, Rich Dad, Poor Dad was the bomb diggity book because it released me to think differently than everybody in my family about getting rich. Rich Dad, Poor Dad. If you haven't read the book, I suggest you read it. It's the number one personal finance book ever written in history of the world. I said, your book, however, the second book, Cash Flow Quadrant, actually had me make better decisions with my money. First one gave me confidence that I'm on the right track. The second book, Cash Flow Quadrant, gave me strategy. And how to start thinking differently about money, so therefore money can finally be on my side. Let me explain. He talked about the cash flow quadrant. Let me go over it very briefly. E stands for employee. S stands for self-employed. B stands for business owner. I stands for investor. So as you're watching this video, let me ask you this question. Are most people in America financially independent? Their money working for them? They're confident in finances? Or do you think most people in America are broke? 
Well, according to this article here, 70% of many people in America today are looking for other ways to make more money because inflation is kicking their butt. The interest rate environment is increasing, so therefore their dream home, their dream neighborhood is starting to get more and more blurry because they can't afford the monthly mortgage payment to live in that neighborhood with a higher interest rate being charged on the same house. So they're pushing away their goals. So if 90% of people in America, 70 to 90% of people in America, would you say, are broken financial independence, this is where most people make their money. They either work for somebody with a W-2 or they're self-employed to own a job, a 1099. That's what I initially did when I left the military. I got insurance licensed. Instead of working for Uncle Sam, I worked for myself. I owned a job. The challenge though, however, was I had a higher cost of living, children, neighborhood, taxes, activities for the kids, clothes, a lot of taxes, a lot of business expenses, overhead, marketing expense. I owned a job and I asked myself this question, 10 years from now, do I really see myself as a one-on-one -on -one individual practitioner selling life insurance? The short answer was no, because I was starting to burn out. It was 2011, 2012. So I decided to make a decision. I need to slide from the employee and self-employed quadrant to the business owner quadrant. And uh, Robert Kiyosaki defines business owners, 500 plus employees or independent contractors or brand ambassadors representing your business ran by a system and process. And no matter what your involvement is, the business not run by you, your individual talent, the business run by systems and processes. Again, this is a psychology of money, how rich people and millionaires think about money. Because regardless if you're there or not, guess what? You still make money. And make a long story short, it took us a little less than seven years to finally master this thing. Where you started building systems, processes, associations, masterminds, started associating with different types of people who are also thinking about the way we wanted money working for us. Because here's the thing, I didn't have any assets working for me. I was broke. I don't come from a rich family. I could barely scrape together 500 bucks. I could barely scrape together 1,000 bucks. However, I can control my income, which is option number two when it came to my situation. Some people get inherited money. I never inherited money. Some people have good credit score. I never had great, a good credit score to, to start business with, to do an SBA loan. By the way, I've never filled out an SBA loan application. I've actually never even filled out a bank loan application to borrow money to fund my business. Why? Because I've controlled my income and I've created capital. Because I increased my income, I minimized my expenses, and guess what? Instead of having money I owe to the bank each month, I had money carried forward into the bank account every month, and it grew, and it grew, and it grew, and it grew, and it's called capital. And so, when I went from thinking like an employee, thinking like a self-employed person, I started thinking more like a business person, because the biggest part there was association. I started associating with more business owners and using a different language, looking at things differently, processing things, differently, having different conversations with different people. Then I started creating a lot more cash and capital and less of our income percentage wise came from our personal efforts. Today, fast forward, instead of uh, saving my money, guess what we did? We started creating more cash flow instead of saving more money. So one or two ways you can think about going about money, your psychology of money, if you want your money to double for you. You can save your way or you can create your way. I chose to create my way. And to add on top of that, a lot of our money now is starting to go to different investments. We invested in a whiskey company called Uncle Nearest Whiskey. We started investing in different businesses. Now the money's starting to come in. We started YouTube, we started social media. Different assets are being created. Different IP is being created. We started writing a book and that book, and I'm on my second book now. So different assets, different intellectual property was created because of thinking like a business owner. Now let me share with you a lot of people don't think about business. Fear. Many people that are raised to think that having a job and being content with a job, being satisfied with a job, right here, their biggest fear is what? Thinking like a business owner. Because there's risk involved, or what they think is risk. And I'm gonna tell you right now, if you think that fear is ruling your life, then you've really departed from your faith. 
Because faith, even though, and by the way, he's got nothing to do with God at this point. Your faith in your future plan, your faith in your formula, the faith in your mentorship, the faith of examples before you should be what you should be hopeful for. And by the way, along the lines, I found my faith towards closer to God. I wrote about it in my book, Faith Made Millionaire. Faith in scripture is defined as substance of things hoped for, but evidence of things not seen. So you want to be financially independent. That in there lies faith, that you have faith already in saving your money. If not, you have faith in creating extra income. That, hello, that's faith. That's not operating in the spirit of fear. That's operating in the spirit of faith. Now it's up to you. Psychology of money is how do you deepen your faith. And the way you deepen your faith is having a conscious decision to start removing fear from your life, to start removing fear from misconceptions, from myths, fear from other people that are around you that's not doing it. We always say here, don't let the broke person kill your multi-million dollar dreams. If you want to be a person that's having the rules of money work for you, not against you, you got to start thinking differently about money. But here's the bottom line. In the last seven years, using this psychology, using this thought process, we took that same $500 investment and we've cash flow, take home pay, net income pay, over $10 million. Had I waited for somebody to pay me that money, had I waited for my savings and investment for that money, it would have taken me 60, 80, over 100 years for that money to finally come my way. Because I chose to follow my faith versus fear, guess what happened? A whole nother world unlocked to my wife and I. And I hope the same way too as well, if you have the courage to do so, that same world unlocks it to you. So before I let you go, I want you to check out this one video here to explain, it breaks down exactly what I'm talking about here. Check out this video here. I took a $500 investment and created an $81 million company. And by the way, I still got it updated because this video was shot a little over a year, year and a half ago. That being said, I'd love to know your thoughts, your questions, your feedback. You agree with me, you don't agree with me. Please put it in the comment section below. If you watch this video, you found some value from it, please consider hitting like. If you watch a couple of our other videos, if you've done so already, please consider hitting subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted next time we upload our next episode. From Dallas, Texas, I'm your money smart guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.